Well, I got something in today that's going to be kind of uh, interesting. Well, interesting for me at least. Uh, and it has to do with this, which is the uh, um, pattern 1907 bayonet for the SMLA rifle. Now, I got this from uh, Slick Slicers a while back ago. Eric sent this to me. Um, and it's, like I said, it's for the SMLE rifle, the Mark III SMLE, uh, used in World War I. Um, came with a wonderful scabbard, too. Everything is nice and complete. What was missing with this was the frog. Uh, now, in an earlier video, I mentioned that I thought this was post-World War II. There is nothing on here to suggest that. It actually is marked 1907. Um, and that's the only mark on this. So most likely this was actually a World War I relic bayonet. Uh, yes, they continued to be used in World War II, but by World War II, the British Army had switched over to the number four rifle as opposed to the uh, Mark III SMLE. And uh, that used a different uh, uh, bayonet. And along with that different bayonet it also used a different frog and that's where i was confused or, or i said it's probably world war ii vintage and that's because uh the frog i have and this did not come with a frog uh for those who don't know what a frog is is it's the uh attachment loop so that you can hook your bayonet to your uh, web gear uh so the frog is separate from the uh, the scabbard. You got a scabbard and a frog, uh, and together they basically make the sheath for the uh, bayonet. Um, a lot of them these days, it's all together. The uh, the Soviet bayonets uh, still had a separate frog from the uh, scabbard, uh, and a lot of uh, bayonets in World War II continue to have a separate frog from the scabbard. Um, the United States Army was probably the uh, the anomaly in that typically the frog for the bayonet scabbard was already attached to it in most cases. But in any case, uh, what this was is the Pattern 37 frog. And I bought this many, many years ago when uh, I bought the uh, Spanish Mauser bayonet. This bayonet cost me $5 at the time. Oh well, that happens. Uh, the bayonet here cost me five bucks at the time. Um, the handle was a little cracked, wood handle and everything. But this was uh, made in Toledo, Spain, and it is a Spanish Mauser bayonet with nice long blade and everything. Obviously, I like bayonets with nice long blades. Uh, the leather sheath, and um, you know the, and uh, I did not have a frog for it, but the Army Navy store where I bought this sold these frogs for 99 cents and this was a pattern 37 um, uh, frog for the British bayonets that we used on the number four rifle which were uh, basically a spike bayonet. But this bayonet or this frog will fit this sheath if you want to jam it in there and uh, slip it through the hole here. Um, did not want to do that. I would rather have a proper frog for it but for <laughs> well over a year this is what I was using for the frog simply be, as a uh, something to hold a place for it and it is just made out of tape and I slipped the bayonet down into it and it held it so that I could display the bayonet but now I've got a proper um, genuine imitation so basically a replica frog for this knife uh, and it just came in today. I, this came out of India. This is one for the, they say for the light horse cavalry or anything, something like that. But it is all made out of leather and everything. Um, and I looked online, read about the, uh, the actual frog for the uh, pattern 1907 bayonet. And everything about this uh, makes it a very authentic replica. It's it is sized correctly. It's got the proper size belt loop up here. Um, it has copper rivets on all four corners. And it also has the brass rolling buckle uh, right here. And it's all made out of leather. Um, you'll notice here, and I don't know if this is the way they came or not, 
but there is no hole punched for the uh, the little buckle here. Uh, but that doesn't worry me too much because what I'm going to do is punch my own hole once I get the bayonet in there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, well, along with you, I'm going to see if it fits. And I know it should be a nice, tight, snug fit. These things were tight. It, it, it wasn't one of those things where you slip it in and slip it out easily. It was really meant to go in there and it pretty much stayed with it. Uh, you could take it apart, but it should be nice and snug. And it has that funky smell that you get from leather made in India. And it's whatever the tanning process was. Hopefully that tanning process will not uh, damage the metal. The metal here is, as you can tell, is all blackened and everything. That is basically the way it came and has still got the bluing on it. Um, nice down here too. This thing uh, is really in great shape. Anyway, we'll see how it fits. I'm going to leave the bayonet in right now for, for string so I don't bend the leather and also so I have something to push with. Yeah, it is definitely tight. You'll notice how it's got the slit here and then it's got a little hole where the, the pin has to fit or the lug. Let's get it down below there. <clears throat> okay, I think it is seated, yes. It is definitely seated. I don't know if you can see there, but it is seated into the hole there. And now what I will do is I'm going to pull uh, the strap across. Now the strap actually goes across uh, the, um, the little lug here or the, um, I don't know what you call it. Anyway. We'll call it the lug on the uh, thing. It goes across there and we're going to pull it as tight as we can to not break. And then what I'm going to do is, if you see there, got a spot right there where that should go. Um, wonder if my pen writes. I'm going to mark where I got to push a hole for the little clasp there. And uh, punch the hole through. So let's hold on and punch the hole. Okay, so I've got the spot marked where I want to punch the hole. And what I'm going to use to do that is an old Swiss soldier's knife. I figured, what the heck? get something with a quarter round leather punch going on and see how well that makes a hole for this leather. And this is something that they would have probably been using this quarter round for is to punch a hole through the leather and something like this. Obviously, <laughs> I'm mixing militaries now. We got the, the British and the, uh, and the uh, Swiss. There we have it. We got a hole through there using the quarter round of a Swiss Army knife. So we know that'll work. But like I said, this is a, an older Swiss soldier's knife. I think this, is, this one is from 1942. Definitely the one with the bad blade. In any case, got the hole now. So let's pull it back through. Only one hole was made. I want it to be as tight as possible. Okay, so <laughs> took a little effort. I probably made the hole a little bit too far back, but I managed to stretch it enough to get it to go through there. And now it is uh, possibly properly fitted. I do not know 100% because this part of the... Uh, 
the the strap might also have to go underneath the uh, the pin here. I don't I don't know 100% for sure. I do know that that is the way I have seen it put on, but I suspect that um, the strap should also go underneath there so that you have less likelihood of this pulling up. This, however, is holding it in there pretty tight, just with the strap going across there because of how tight the strap is. But now I have a proper frog for my pattern 1907 bayonet and I kind of went with this color of uh, leather because it uh well where is it at kind of like a matching set now so for my uh, uh Robins of Dudley push dagger and it's on little leather sheath too so kind of cool anyway Next up, I just need to find a couple of more World War I bayonets. I've got my eyes on a uh, French Labelle bayonet. Uh, again, um, I don't see the frog with it. I just see the scabbard and the, uh, the bayonet. Actually, a lot of the French Labelle bayonets, I just see the bayonet. So I definitely want at least the scabbard to come with the bayonet, though. So we'll see. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it also it's a matter of do I want to invest another hundred or so bucks in another World War One bayonet. This one fortunately was gifted to me so that was a great price and I am forever grateful to uh, Eric from Slick Slicers for giving this to me. It really does uh, impress me a lot. I really like this knife and uh, it was a very nice gift from uh, Eric. There's no doubt about that. Uh, this is uh, the, the Spanish Mauser uh, well, Spain, World War One. I, I don't think so. I have a feeling that this one probably came to the United States sometime around the time of the Spanish Civil War. Um, um, don't know for certain, but that would have been from the, the 1930s or so. Any case, uh, pretty cool bayonet too. But this one, this was really the star of the show and it's nice to have a uh, a proper frog for it, uh, even if it is a uh, replica.